What's going on guys? I've been doing a lot of research and this is something that has been standing out. And I need to correct some information that I put out in the older video. The murder rate is continuing to soar. And what does this mean? As in the last video, I talked about the Great Reset really began in the 1970s this murder thing, and also how to protect yourself, is going to be very, very significant in 2022. In 2020, the murder rate increased 30% nationwide, 30%. That is a huge uptick. And I read some reports where the murder rate kind of stabilized, but the reality is the murder rate did not stabilize it has continued to escalate. So we'll take the murder rate, which is, and is disproportionately in poor communities. Yes, there are people who get murdered in wealthy communities, but that's quite rare compared to what happens in, say a city like Chicago, which is the third largest city in America, where murder is a commonplace event. So you're going to see their murder rate dramatically expand in poor neighborhoods. And why is this? Once again, we're technically not in a recession, right? However, we have recessionary pressures. And one of the things that is happening is that a lot of people are under stress and also hand in hand with the rising murder rate, domestic violence is going through the roof. Now, what do couples typically get divorced over? Money. They fight about money or the lack of money. So right now, from a technical standpoint, we're not in a recession. We're not. But recessionary pressures are pushing up this murder rate, are pushing up domestic violence. And what does this mean for the average person? person. If you want to protect yourself from being a statistic, I recommend that you do not live in poor neighborhoods. You know, I live in Buckhead, Atlanta. Uh, there's a lot of crime here, but it's petty crime and there are shootings here. But once again, if you look at who's doing the shooting, is it the people who live in Buckhead? No, it's the people who are visiting Buckhead. So these people are coming from the lower social economic strata and they were coming here and they're bringing their habits because let's talk about this. One of the things that I have been talking about on this channel through the many different names is why I don't live in the hood. I have a video on this channel years ago, why I don't live in the hood. And there are many, many bad things that can happen to you for just merely living in the hood just living there. And this is one of the reasons I don't live in a hood. So once again, uh, with the abdication of America sending our manufacturing to China, we have left about 120, 130 million people vulnerable to the global reset. And with that, it's going to come a lot of nasty consequences. You're going to have once again, one of the signals of the recession that I feel that will be here in 2023. I don't think it's going to hit in 2022. It, if it does hit in 2022, it would be the last two quarters of 2022. But even though we're not in a recession, we have a lot of recessionary attributes and pressures. And this murder rate is one of them. If things are economically fine, why are people so stressed and they're killing people? I want you to ask yourself that question. Why are they killing people? Because typically, and this is some stuff that I saw when I lived in the boarding house, that fights could break out over simple things. One night, one of the residents of the house lost his mind because he thought that someone had took his butter. Butter. He was in the kitchen. He's like, all right, which one of you motherfuckers got my butter? And 
he had a gun. He had a gun. He was waving his gun around and he was angry over a butter. And I just like quietly got up and went to my room. I did not want to be out there. And he got into it with another resident. And it's like, I know you the one that was taking my butter. And this man had a gun. He was in a heated conflict over butter. And this is symbolic of what happens in the hood. One night I was sitting on the front porch of the boarding house and it was starting to get dark. And this girl literally just walks down the street. She's high on crack or something. She's high. She has a gun in her hand and she's literally walking and shooting pop, pop, pop. So you have a lot of dysfunctional behaviors in the hood. And this is one of the reasons that the murder rate is increasing in the hood because the dysfunction is increasing. Because like in my video, talking about the global reset, once again, you have people who are facing challenges and they don't have the resource environment to help them face those challenges. And with this acting out, prostitution, drug use, crime, all kinds of things just happen. There, there's a channel that I watch, it's called Soft White Underbelly. And this, these people are the exemplification of the folks that I'm talking about because I know that, you know, maybe you live in a middle-class neighborhood. Maybe you're, you're living in a house and you don't see these people in your normal day walk, daily walk of life. I'm here to tell you that they're here and their numbers are growing. And as that pool of people grows, you're going to see the elements of the, 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 the dysfunction of that base of people continue to elevate. You're going to see an increase in murder. Like I think 2022 is going to be a watershed year for murder rate going to be a watershed year for suicide it's going to be a watershed year for domestic violence because you know I was married and I worked hard and we never were rich when we were married and I never ever it never ever occurred to me to come home and punch my my wife never in my mind it never happened Fun fact, one night, and this, this is part of the dysfunction, I come home from work. I used to work second shift at Northside Hospital. And I come home and we get into a fight and she's like, I should call the police on you. I'm like, me being a smart ass, I handle her the phone. And this woman calls 911 and says, I hit her when I didn't. And this is part of the dysfunction of, you know, because once again, we were not, we were kind of struggling, but, you know, we always had food. We always ate. Uh, the electricity never got cut off. We just never had extra money for those nice little luxuries. And this woman called the police. And fortunately for me, the police believed me versus her because uh, the two cops came and they were walking around and I was completely stunned. I was like, why would you call the police and say I hit you when I did? And that's one of the lessons that I will address on the Lost Kings about female behavior. But it really floored me. And th this is the pathology of the dysfunction. Like I was working, I was doing what I needed to do as a husband, but because we did not have those extras, my wife was disappointed and she was so disappointed that she fabricated this story of domestic abuse. This is the pathology of the underclass that they want to be happy. And, you know, everybody wants to be happy. That's a normal thing. But many people feel that happiness is their birthright. And my ex, you know, I just, you know, 
a lot of nasty consequences could have happened because I remember the cop and the cop actually told my wife at the time that, ma'am, I don't think he touched you. Because at the time I was working out, I was diesel. I was like 245, benching like 400 pounds, squatting, deadlift 600, 700 pounds. So I had a very strong physical presence at that time. And you know, the cops came in and they were walking around and the cops like, you know, for him to be beating you up, he ain't even sweating. And like I said, you know, when the, when the, you know, and they left and everything, and I t the cops was like, I didn't touch her. I never hit her. And this is one of the things that you will consistently see in the social underclass is the exaggerations. Like there are men in prison for rapes that they did not commit. And uh, you know, when you want to talk about rape and you want to talk about the Me Too movement, they're like, that rarely happens. And I honestly, since I was a victim of that type of behavior, I don't think it rarely happens. I think it depends upon which social economic pool that you're in. And we were, I would say not in the lower echelon. We were probably, if you had to break it into tiers, let's say the bottom tier was people who was homeless, the middle tier were people who had jobs who were struggling, and the third tier of poverty, these three tiers, I figured we were at the top tier or maybe entering into the next segment. So even at that level, I experienced dysfunction. And there are men, I will say this, who are in jail for rapes they did not commit. There are men in jail for domestic abuse that they did not commit because a dysfunctional woman got angry. That's all it takes. A dysfunctional woman got angry. And once again, going back to the resident in the boarding house who was bandishing a gun around over some butter. Butter. Not like, you know, someone went in this room and took a thousand dollars for him. No, 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 no. That I could understand. You know, someone took a thousand dollars for you. I, I could understand that. But over butter. So what you will see, and it goes back into like one of the things with the poverty and the social economic underclass, these people don't have the emotional tools to deal with conflict. So it is very easy for a small thing to become very, very large and have some serious consequences. Dave Chappelle had this little skit on his show when keeping it real goes wrong. And that is a good analysis of what happens with the social economic underclass. Keeping it real, I remember years and years ago, I was dating this attorney who was from Chicago. She had managed to transcend her social economic class, yet she was still a product of her environment. One night we were out and we were just talking and then she started talking about respect and she understood how someone can kill someone over respect. And I was just sitting there like, all right, you're an attorney, you work for a corporate firm, you make all this money, yet your sensibilities are still rooted in the hood, still rooted in the hood. And this is one of my terms, uh, what I like to call a glorified hood rat. These are women who are educated, who have corporate positions, but from an internal situation, they're still closely aligned with hood principles, hood life, and they can pretty much get together on you in a heartbeat. So that's how she was. And it, it was one of the reasons the relationship didn't work out because I wasn't socialized like that. I didn't grow up in the ghetto. I didn't grow up in the hood. And once again, this is what you're going to see with this demographic and this population, you're gonna see a lot of conflict. Domestic abuse is gonna go through the roof. Murder is gonna go through the roof because these people don't have conflict resolution tools. They just simply don't. This is one of the reasons that I date submissive women. Submissive women typically don't keep up a lot of mess and they don't keep, you know, typically, if a woman is truly submissive, she's just not going to act out that way. And this is one of the reasons that I date them because um, I will tell you 
that when you deal with someone from that demographic, because when I lived in the hood, I dated a few hood chicks and it's very, very different because one of the things when you're dating someone, whether it's a male or female from the hood is there's a very low flash point threshold in these individuals. Now, what do I mean by that? That the littlest thing can send them off the littlest thing. And when they go off, they don't go off mildly. Like I was watching this court case of this guy who was going to jail for murder. He and his wife got into a fight and then she said something to him and he pulled out a gun and he shot her in the head. Now, this is the activity of low flashpoint threshold individuals that she could say something to him and he pulls out a gun and takes her life. This is uh, this is one of the things that you're going to see, because as this um, the great worthless people segment of society is going to grow and these people, uh, honestly, you're not going to want to engage in them with them. Like I know everyone is like, you know, everyone's a good person. And everyone deserves a certain chance. Um, I will tell you a story of I was dating this chick that I later found out had recently got out of prison. That relationship didn't last very long because, you know, she told me one story, then she told me another story. Then I come to find out that she was a perpetual liar. And once again, there was uh, all of these tattoos and, you know, like I said, I, I'm not a fan of tattoos, you know, unless they're really elegant. I did date a girl that had two sleeves and they were really beautiful. I mean, she spent a lot of money. They looked really good. And she didn't just throw stuff on her body because she had a whim. You know, she would think about what she wanted to put on her body for months before she actually did it. So that's why her stuff looked really lit. But once again, you're not going to want to engage with these people because of that emotional immaturity and their low flash point threshold. You could be out having lunch and you can literally say something that you don't really think you don't mean you're you're not trying to be insulting, but you could say something that is going to flip that switch in this person and they're going to lose it. They're going to lose it. And there is no reasoning. There's no talking with these people. And I will say that the chick that I used to date when she was said she did say something I will say is very true that a lot of people were in prison because they didn't want to change. They are a certain way and they have these proclivities and these behaviors that keep bringing them back to jail because they don't want to change because this chick she had been in jail like five times and I was like not prison not just jail not just arrested and spent some time in jail but actually gone to prison and what you're going to see and this kind of comes back to uh, the guys who sold my BMW this guy was a convicted felon that got caught with a gun so I know this may sound like, you know, everyone deserves a certain chance. Everyone can redeem themselves. And I feel that many of these people in the worthless segment of society are unredeemable. And if you want to mess around with them, you want to hang around with them. Do not be surprised if you get caught up because I remember I was dating with this girl. I was just having a conversation with her and she was part of the worthless segment of society. I was unaware of it at the time, but I just said something, didn't mean none of it. And she, once again, flipped that switch on that flashpoint. And, you know, she actually left. She got so angry and upset and I didn't really say nothing, but I had flipped, I had crossed the line in her mind that she essentially left my house. So, you know, once again, once I saw her who she was, I stopped messing with her because one of the things that uh, recently that I did is I did an evaluation and I'll talk about this more on the Lost Kings, but I have certain relationships that I am going to get rid of because they're not 
for in my best interest on the long term situation. They're just simply not. But once again, this is another signal that a recession is coming. And I feel that this recession is going to be quite painful. Now, I don't think it's going to be a housing recession like in 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12. I don't think it's going to be anything like this. I think that it's going to be a broader economic recession. It's going to touch like housing because we, once again, I don't know what they're going to do with all these people who are in forbearance. I don't know what's about that. I got to do some research on that. But I feel that this next recession is going to be quite painful and lengthy because before the pandemic, I was talking about how weak the economy was. And that's why the pandemic caused so much disruptions. And now we have some unknown force creating this global supply chain um, shortage. I feel that it's 100% manufactured because when you manufacture things like this and you cause people pain, people will give up freedoms to end the pain. So I feel that that's one of the things that's going on. But look for the murder rate, domestic violence rate, and all types of crime, rape, drug use, drug abuse, all, all types of abuse. Look for these to skyrocket because during the pandemic, suicide rate like quadrupled because people were isolated. And there are many people who cannot deal with being alone. Uh, this is why um, putting someone in a hole, you know, separating them from the rest of the population is such a controversial form of punishment because when you put people into a situation where they are completely and utterly by themselves, there's a group of people who cannot deal with that. They just cannot deal with being by themselves. They cannot deal with being isolated. A few years ago, we had this snowstorm here in Atlanta and the Facebook page had me rolling that these people who were like in their house for a week, they were tripping, they were about to lose it. So we're gonna have a lot of people who are gonna be socially isolated. We're gonna have a lot of people who are gonna be very depressed. We're going to have a lot of social upheaval. But I feel that just watch the murder rate for 2022 because like I said, I put out some bad information. The murder rate of 2020 skyrocketed and the murder rate of 2021 is higher. It's not less. And that's something that I misinterpreted with the data. So one of the things that you want to do, and I, I know this is going to sound overly harsh, but you want to stay away from people in the lower social economic strata. You don't want to hang out with them. You don't want to party with them because 99% of the time, nothing's going to happen. But you can be at this one party in the hood and there will be someone who would get their flash point trigger switch flipped and they just start shooting up the whole party. Just like this guy who literally took his car and killed these people in his parade. These people were doing nothing to him. They were not bothering him, but because they were happy and their lives were better than his, he decided to cause damage. And that th this is this is going to be a reoccurring theme in 2022, 2023, 2024. So, guys, you don't want like I know that some of you part of the corporate citizen family, you used to gr you grew up and you've got friends who are in that social economic lower lower strata and it's a hard one it's a hard one because something you, you can't go out and get new old friends but um man um i gotta say you gotta be real careful because this is something i learned in the military there are some people that you can be the sergeant of the platoon leader and you can be cool with them but when it's time to do work and you issue orders they they, they know how to act there are some people you cannot be overly friendly with. And once again, guys, like I said, you're gonna want to stay away from the socially economic lower class because you're not gonna wanna party with them. You're not gonna wanna hang out with them. I know that sounds overly harsh because you know, I know, I know that's a very large segment of people that many people are included in that, but to keep yourself safe, you're not gonna want to blend or hang out or be around these people. You're just simply not. 
So one of the things that I am doing, like I went to the gun store and I got a whole bunch of ammunition because I'm getting ready to start going to the range because uh, I, I carry every day. I walk around every day, especially with some of the threats that have been made against me because the fool who stole my BMW, he made some threats and I was like, okay, this folk, this person is a convicted criminal. He doesn't have a lot going on. So he doesn't really have a lot to lose by committing more criminal activity. So I, since then, I just carry every day. I have nothing has happened, but I'd rather be ready than trying to get ready if something happens. You know what I'm saying? So this is another signal that the economy is degrading because like I said, the primary economy is deleveraging and the digital economy is growing and the criminal economy is growing. The secondary economy, I feel is going to see a boom because people will be looking for deals. When I was in the storage auction business, uh, my business was booming during the recession. It was booming because people were looking for deals. So I see the underground, the black market, the criminal market booming and the secondary market booming and the digital market, digital economy booming. But the primary economy is going to continue to deleverage. It's going to deleverage jobs. It's going to deleverage opportunities. It's going to be a wild, wild thing for probably the next five or 10 years. Because right now, what's the big thing? Work from home. And there are many people, knowledge workers, accountants, attorneys, uh, digital scientists, data scientists, they can work from home. But if you work in the warehouse where you have to pull orders, you can't work from home. You work in a restaurant where you gotta cook food and serve food, you can't work from home. So you're gonna see the people in the lower social economic class be pissed off because they're gonna wanna be able to work from home. And many of them don't have the skill sets or the ability to get those type of jobs. So this is gonna create an inequity in society where like if you're a knowledge worker, like you're living well, that could be enough to have someone wanna kill you because they're jealous. I'm, I know that sounds kind of far-fetched, but I'm telling you, this is what I have seen over life. I tell this story, I've told it many times, of when I got a brand new BMW because I was doing really well with my job at Business Environments and I went to my friend's house and that was the last time I ever talked to him when I showed up at his house with that brand new BMW. Last time we ever had a conversation. It got really strange and it was a really important lesson for me to learn that people will flip on you and start treating you differently when you become successful. Uh, you will have people you don't even know who will be really supportive of you. Uh, and there were people in your network who may surprise you with how well they will support you. And there were, on the other side, you have another group of people who will piss on you because you're successful and it will shock you. I've gone through all of that. Like once again, this is why none of the stuff on YouTube even bothers me because a lot of it isn't this fake outrage. It's now turned to jealousy because one of the things that is happening is they're leaving comments to try to dissuade my supporters. Now, why are you trying to mess up my business when I've done nothing to you? Hmm, that's jealousy. And that's something I've been dealing with pretty much my for 11 and a half years here on YouTube. So I'm used to it. But guys, protect yourself, govern yourself accordingly. You know, you, you don't want to be rubbing elbows with the socially disenfranchised because that's going to create the opportunity for you to become a statistic. Once again, yes, there are people in wealthy neighborhoods who are murdered, but the propensity for murder is concentrated in the hood and the lower social economic classes. And we're gonna see a skyrocketing of murder, domestic abuse, suicide, substance abuse, all types of nasty ills that come when people can't cope. So let me know what you think of this video. Um, just drop it in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one.